This morning on Forever Young, we continue our special series on plastic surgery. On Monday, you met Susan LaSala, a 57-year-old senior producer for the Today Show, who decided she wanted to have a few things taken care of cosmetically. Before her surgery, Susan met one more time with her doctor, Cheryl Aston, to ask him some questions about the facelift she was about to have. You, you explained to me inside where the, where the incisions are going to be. During this visit, Susan took the opportunity to ask Dr. Aston some questions about her recovery. First, she wanted to know whether or not the surgical incisions will eventually go away. Well, incisions never go away once they're made in the skin. Mm -hmm. But we try to hide the incisions in the natural skin creases and in areas around the face where it's difficult for you to see them. I plan on going back to work two weeks after the procedure. Is, is there a problem with that? I usually tell people that at two weeks you should be okay. At three weeks, I permit patients to go to the gym and exercise. You could play tennis or golf at three weeks, but you will still feel numb in your cheeks. You'll still feel tight along your jawline. You'll feel a little discomfort on your chin. And on your forehead, when you touch it, it will still be uncomfortable to some degree at that point in time. Do I need to change facial moisturizers after this, uh, after the surgery? No. Or you should treat your hair the same way. Mm -hmm. Shampoos, conditioners, color, mm -hmm. uh, the same way you've always done. Mm -hmm. And use the same makeups that agree with your skin now. How long will this procedure last? I mean, I'm, I'm 57. What what realistically, I mean, do I have to come in for a tune-up or a lube job after, what, five years or ten years? Or? Well, the average secondary facelift is eight to ten years, but yet I see some people that I operated on 20 years ago who are just coming back for a secondary lift. After all her questions are answered and Susan feels comfortable about the task at hand, the next order of business is to make sure that she is healthy and that her body is fit for this procedure. The process is routine. First, blood is drawn and then sent to a lab to make sure her sodium levels are normal and that she is not anemic. An additional test will determine the rate at which her blood clots, giving Dr. Axton an idea of how much bruising she'll experience after surgery. Okay, what's next? After a long day, Susan has just one more stop to make. Big smile out again. Good. Make no mistake, these are not glamour shots. Don Allen Studios in Manhattan exclusively shoots medical portraits, which are vital to the doctor during surgery. Again, looking at the top of my head. Susan's facial muscles are relaxed under sedation, making it difficult for her surgeon to accurately calculate the amount of skin that needs to be corrected. So Dr. Aston will use these preoperative photographs as a guide. These don't hurt to actually see them. The final preparations are complete. Susan is ready for surgery. Nice photos, LaSala. Coming up tomorrow, the surgery. <laughs> Susan goes under the knife in the name of beauty. If you have any questions about plastic surgery, you can email them to us at today.msnbc.com. And on Friday, we'll try to answer as many as we can.